we're here today with Krista Thompson. You're with BD yes. In Industries, or it's a group that produces diagnostic equipment and also other medical supplies. Yes. We took a visit yesterday to a shipping crate l laboratory or shipping container laboratory that you, your company provides one of the CD4 uh, analyzers. But I wanted you to describe a little bit about, uh, first off, the shipping container uh, laboratory and it's the role it plays within the the HIV environment and within the health clinic setting yes. that's it, that's in the township that we visited sure I'd be happy to so the shipping container laboratory itself is actually the brainchild of a group called Togatainer and this company actually came up with the idea of using old abandoned shipping containers and turning them into laboratories that could go to places that where laboratory support really isn't available for ARV clinics in particular so really next to the patient so that they can get their labs done um, in the same place where they receive their medications so they figured out a way to outfit um, this laboratory in the container and my company BD helped them do that in terms of implementing um, the CD4 count capability which is an important test to test a patient's immune um, response and we're very excited to, to see this come to fruition. Togatainer now has eight laboratories um, across South Africa with plans to implement more. And it's very exciting to see that laboratory capability brought really close to the patient. And the shipping container is actually rather large. It's about, what, 25, 30 feet long, 15 feet wide. You, you specifically do the CD4 yes. test. Yes. And could you explain that? And then we can talk about what, I know your company doesn't do it, but some of the others. Sure, absolutely. Andrew. So the, the CD4 test itself, um, you take a sample of blood and you have some preparation steps and an incubation time which takes about an hour and then you run it through this small analyzer that actually gives you the um, result in about three minutes. And the other tests that are being done in this laboratory, it's really amazing to think about these rusty shipping containers yeah. that are sitting in ports all over the world and they've taken this and turned it into really a beautiful laboratory space. So you walk in the front door and there's a nice little hand washing station and you walk in, there's a space to accept samples and do a specimen um, uh, logging in. And then there are a series of instruments um, down that row um, of, of the lab space, chemistry analyzers, the CD4 as we've already mentioned, hematology, and also viral load. And then on the back wall, there's also a, a microscopy center there to do some basic microscopy. There's a refrigerator to store reagents and samples, and uh, a very well-documented um, series of laboratory manuals and, and quality control mechanisms. So this is a really full-functioning laboratory that's producing great results for the patients. That's what I saw it as. I saw it walking through, mm -hmm. seeing the CD4 count and the R your complete blood count and the viral load. It's basically everything we receive in the and United the States. Right. And uh, I'm told that one of these sh uh, shipping containers can handle up to 8,000 patients as far as need, their needs for testing? Yes, I believe so. And that particular one that we saw yesterday, they actually are covering 4,500 patients that are currently on mm -hmm. treatment. And so that's, you know, 4,500 people that would normally have to get their labs done someplace else if they got them done at all. So it's really exciting to see that connection with the medical clinic there. And we see this is not really a mobile lab. It's more like you, you can move it if you have to, but right. it's basically a self-contained so that you can place it where you need it to. And in this case, it's right next to a healthcare clinic. Yes, that's right. And so it's designed to be sort of, um, not custom built, they've, they've got you know particular characteristics that they know how to outfit it, but you can place it easily you know where you need to. And that particular setting um, is near a city, but there are some that are far more remote so that you can really get that laboratory testing in more remote locations. But uh, it's not on wheels, but um, it is in that And container. you said there's currently eight within Southern, S southern Africa. Yes, the in southern South part Africa, South right, Africa. and then a, f a few in some other countries, but Togatainer certainly has um, plans to expand. Is this something that's also being seen as far as outside the HIV community, as far as a mobile lab, or is this specifically developed for HIV applications? Well, I, I think they've taken a really good approach in terms of both meeting the short-term needs of the people that are on ARV therapy, and they got their initial startup funding from PEPFAR. So, you know, they 
the laboratory is put in place then to support the, the needs of the people who are going to ARV therapy, but Togotator has the goal to go out and market their services then to other um, doctors in the area so that they could do initial um, testing and become self-sustainable. So I think that's really a great balance in terms of trying to meet short-term needs you know, with international funding, but really having that long-term plan a, about how they become self-sustaining. So we're talking about PEPFAR provided the initial funding. The World Bank is involved, or other funders, or also. I'm not aware of the you know the additional funding. I, I know that PEPFAR was helping them get started, um, but they may have other sources of funding as well. But I really was intrigued about the, you know the idea that they're going to market their services and you know for their laboratory testing and make this self-sustainable. And what's the, what's the, you think is going to be the future of this as far as expansion projects? Are there things in in line as far as from what you're seeing that where this is going to be also uh, we're going to be seeing other shipping container labs throughout Africa and other parts of the world? I believe so and I know that the tow container company certainly has plans to do that and it makes a lot of sense and I, I, I think that is absolutely replicable and I think that you'll also see some different models. I know that they're also looking at doing some TB laboratory, TB specific laboratories within that kind of a container facility and you know we're certainly interested in, in seeing that happen. Our company makes uh, TB diagnostics okay. as well. Which would and be a very important part of the absolutely. laboratory since we're learning from this conference that how TB is one of the most, right. you know, challenging aspects of an infectious disease we're facing and we're and especially for people who are co-infected with HIV and TB. It's very critical and there's some real in terms of laboratory science and doing TB diagnostics there's some important biosafety considerations you know both for the technician doing the work and for you know people in the area so it'll be really interesting to see one of those containers outfitted with some of that biosafety capability to in order to be able to do those diagnostics. And I think we'll also see some experimentation about the different kinds of assays that can really be done in that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, for one thing, we're going to look at putting a, a larger flow cytometer, the FACS caliber, into one of these to be able to handle a higher volume of, of CD4 tests. Okay. And so that'll be the first, you know, So you can place. even see right. even more patients. Right. But, and I think the, uh, the viral load, when I was talk, talking to the people there, they said the viral load basically takes several days to do. So that's right. probably the one drawback. But I guess the CV, CD4 is the primary component and, and viral load is secondary. Uh, basically, people there, that you get two to three tests done every year if you're on treatment? That's usually the protocol and it varies a little bit um, country by country. But um, you know, two to three um, times a year to get your C4. Get a CD4 test to determine when you should go on therapy. That's the current protocol. I know there's a lot of discussion here at this conference about what the about what the right time to start is. But the current protocol is to see when you know when you should start with the CD4 and then to monitor throughout therapy at least two or three times per year. Yeah, which is pretty standard right. to the U.S. two right. to three to four times a year. Right, and that's so, an exciting thing to see that you know that you know the best standard of care and and to be able to deliver it through these unique models like the like the Toga Tanner concept. It's very inspiring how everything's mm -hmm. came together. It's the Toga container, it's your group that goes in and, and is able to provide, a, along with other companies, oh, the, companies the, yeah, the, the, the uh, diagnostic equipment that's needed. Mm -hmm. And then you can have the laboratory technicians and uh, who are funded probably from another source. So every <laughs> everybody's working together to make this a, a, right. a project that's viable and working in Africa right, right. now. That is an exciting thing, and I also I love it when I see projects that get replicated and also have a sustainability plan because that's not as, as common. Right. And that's exciting, and that's one of the things I really like best. We got about a lot of vision one. people who want to get things started, right. but then you have yeah, to continue looks, the this, process. It's already been replicated. It's already been replicated at least eight times, and it's been replicated more. And then with the plan for sustainability, I think that's just terrific. And I wish you the best in the future, and, and continue on your work. Yeah, thank you very much. It was okay. a pleasure. Thank you.